We continue our series on questions Jesus asked as we look at Matthew 6 and 27. Jesus asked this question, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Worry. One definition defines it to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts. It was Henry Ford who said, I believe God is managing affairs and he doesn't need any advice from me. With God in charge, I believe everything will work out for the best in the end, so what is there to worry about? Well, as a society, we seem to have found plenty to worry about. We constantly torment ourselves with disturbing thoughts to the point where, as the definition implies, it leads to a degree of suffering. Medical experts associate worry with many physical and mental diseases brought on by lifestyle habits that affect the way we live our lives. In 1948, Dale Carnegie wrote a book entitled How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Unfortunately, worry often disturbs what should be productive living and in a sense puts our lives, as God intended, on hold until we are able to deal with the issues causing us to worry. In Matthew 6, 25 and 27, Jesus addresses the issue of worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Then he asked this question, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Common sense tells us that worry will never change the end result. It is not some magical formula that if we worry enough, we can somehow change the outcome of what will happen. Jesus tells us not to worry about life, not because nothing bad will ever happen, but because we have a Heavenly Father who is ultimately in control. There is a chorus we sing that says, I know He cares for me, so I'll trust to my Father in Heaven, for I know that He cares for me. Nothing complicated about those words. Simply put, God cares for us, loves us, and is deserving of our trust in all situations. Jesus compares the situation with birds who fly around, go from day to day, never worrying about tomorrow. Yet God always provides for them. He then asks a rhetorical question. Are you not much more valuable than they? Obviously the answer is yes. God will provide for all who trust in Him. We may not understand that provision, and sometimes it may not be in the manner we would prefer. Wouldn't it be great if it was impossible for anything bad to happen to us? But as they say, that would be living in a dream world. Because life sometimes is hard, and can often give us situations that can cause us to worry, we need to know that there is an alternative to worry. Listen to what the message translation of Philippians 4, 6 and 7 tells us. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. The next time you are caused to worry, stop and ask yourself, how will worrying help this situation? Then bring it to God and ask Him to help you overcome your worry and help you to deal with what is happening. Next week we will look at another question Jesus asked.